I think there'll, there'll be protests every day until justice is served. A new level of oversight has been added to the LMPD. Our body camera policy has been changed to require their use for all officers executing search warrants. Happy birthday, dear Brianna. Happy birthday to for love, the call for to honor her name has brought us all here today. Say her name! Brianna, that's all she wanted to do was save lives. So with this law, she'll get to continue to do that. It's a start. You got a long way to go, but you got to start somewhere. As we reflect this 150 days since Brianna was murdered, we have gotten a lot accomplished, and I'm not taking away from that, but there's still a lot to be done. We're tired of what we are seeing here in Louisville, Kentucky. It seems as though everyone wants us to move on and what black people are saying, what our allies are saying, is that we will not move on. We will continue to work on behalf and with the protesters who have put their freedom on the line to bring awareness to not just Breonna Taylor, but to the systemic problems facing our city. In the matter of Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Brett Hankison, the Jefferson County Grand Jury charges as follows. I understand that Miss Brianna Taylor's death has become a part of a national story and conversation. I urge those protesting on the streets to remember this. Peaceful protests are your right as an American citizen. Instigating violence and destruction are not. Look, this is a complicated case. I would really encourage people to read up on this. There is no body cam footage of it, right? We don't have video of it, which I think for some people makes it maybe difficult to understand, but there's a lot of information about what happened that night that raises questions about why were the police even there? Was this no-knock warrant the right way to approach it? Of these officers who fired their weapons, which which bullets struck Breonna Taylor, right? Who, who killed Breonna Taylor? Who is physically responsible for doing that? There is ballistics information. There is There should be a lot of information from which the Kentucky Attorney General is going to be able to pull from and try to right. explain why we are seeing these charges, Jason. Right, and still a lot of outstanding questions here, and the Attorney General is going to be laying out his case uh, just a few moments from now, but we already know the, the, the foundation of what, of what has happened here. Uh, basically, uh, wanton endangerment in the first degree, and according to Kentucky state law, that happens when a person has wantonly engaged in conduct which creates a substantial danger or death or serious physical 
injury. Again, this is a low-level felony, punishable by up to five years. This is not what Breonna Taylor's family wanted to see, not what her mother wanted to see. I've spoken to her on a few occasions, and, and at one point I asked her, did she have faith in the system? And she said that she has seen the system fail so many times, she didn't really have faith that the system was going to rule in her favor this time. And even before this happened, Brianna, there, were, there was a lot of talk about this particular officer, Officer Brett Hankinson, who, as you know, was fired by the Louisville Metro Police Department for wantonly and blindly firing his weapon 10 times. And there was a lot of talk among those who support Brianna Taylor and her family that perhaps this officer would be the, quote, fall guy. Uh, and then the reason why they say that it's because it's the family's position that all three of the officers that day were reckless, that all three of them should be held accountable. And at the very least, that these officers should have faced second degree manslaughter charges. That is not what we're seeing. And again, we're going to hear from the attorney general, get an opportunity to hear about the case, lay out some of the some of the specifics in terms of how they reached that decision. So tonight, as you can see behind me, this is Jefferson Square Park, where most of the protesters have been gathering for weeks. Everyone seems to be abiding by the curfew. We're not seeing a much different scene from last night when we saw a lot of the police out here in riot gear. That's not happening tonight. A short time ago, as we were showing here uh, on, our, on our air, there was a standoff between police and protesters at a church about 15 minutes away from here. They were negotiating. Clergy there at the church were negotiating with police to try and release some of the protesters who had gone to the church for neutral ground to sort of a place for them to stay while the after the curfew hours. Uh, police re relenting, eventually letting them leave and saying if they go home, they would not be arrested. And so far, protesters here have been doing that, Don. So you witnessed a confrontation uh, between protesters and vigilantes. What did you see, Shimon? Yeah, so this happened around several hours ago. So the protesters who have been gathering here got word that this group had gathered at a nearby hotel, uh, and they were in the parking lot of this hotel uh, parking their vehicles, uh, and the protesters went there and they confronted them. And the group had weapons, they had their weapons out, and they were dressed in uh, uh, military fatigue, uh, helmets, vests, and long guns, long rifles, and there was this confrontation that went on for several minutes between the protesters and this group of men. Eventually, it ended, and everyone dispersed uh, and walked away, and it ended peacefully, Don. Well, oh, that's good news. Um, Commissioner Ramsey, these situations can turn violent, and it can happen very quickly. We've seen it. We saw it in Kenosha. We saw it in Portland. <coughs> Thankfully, that didn't happen here, but when you see these confrontations, as a former law enforcement official, um, that's that's got to really worry you. It does. I mean, I get very, very concerned. I've handled um, countless protests between Washington, D.C. And, and Philadelphia. And the one thing that's different is we didn't have to worry about uh, armed vigilantes or militia uh, militiamen or people within the demonstrators uh, being armed. But when you've got two sides now and people tend to bring firearms, particularly the, the militia people, uh, that is a recipe for disaster, and we saw that in Kenosha. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. There's another knock at the door. She's yelling at the top of her lungs, and I am too at this point. Who is it? No answer, no response. So when we come out, when we get out of the um, bed or whatever, like walking towards the door, the like the door like comes like off the hinges. So I just let off one shot. Like I still can't see who it is or anything.
banged on the door, um, no response, banged on it again, no response. At that point, we started announcing ourselves, please, please come to the door, please, we have a search warrant. As soon as I clear, he fires, boom. As soon as the shot hit, I could feel the heat in my leg. And so I just returned fire, I got four rounds off. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Somebody kicked in the door and shot my girlfriend. Is she alert and able to talk to you? Uh, no, she's not. We're happy that he at least sparked one of them today. We still want the other officers involved in Brianna's murder terminated as well. Uh, and we still want them prosecuted. While we await a decision from Attorney General Daniel Cameron on whether or not charges will be filed in this case, my administration is not waiting to move ahead with needed reforms to prevent a tragedy like this from ever happening again. The above-named defendant, Brett Hankison, committed the offense of wanton endangerment in the first degree